Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ask Amber and in this video I'm going to be going over how I use Poyomi shaders for all of my material. Let's get started. In the videos before this, we have set up our avatar descriptor, we've brought our avatar in and we've extracted all of the materials out of our FBX and put them in a materials folder. And I always like to start with getting the basics down. So I'm going to select every single material that I have and I'm going to change them to Poyomi and I'm going to change them to Poyomi Tune, which is the shader that I'm using today. I usually use Pro, but because the Tune version is free, I'm going to be using that one for this tutorial video so that you guys can download it and follow along without too much hassle. So it's already looking a lot better with the Poyomi shader on than with that standard shader. And I do some things for all of my shaders at once. So before I go into the individual shaders, I'm just going to do a global edit on all of these. So first I'm going to set my rendering preset to cutout. Now some of these will not use all cutout. Some of them will be transparent, but for the majority of them, they're going to be cutout. So I'm just going to put that to all. And then for the very few that I have transparent, I will change that when I do the individual edits to those materials. For color and normals, I'm going to leave that as is because that's on an individual basis. But on shading, I want them all to be shaded very similarly. So I'm going to go into light data and the first thing I change is the minimum brightness. And I always put my minimum brightness at 0.25 and this just makes it so that it's not going to be super dark in any world that you're in. So if you're in a really dark world, like your avatar is not going to go all totally dark and shadowy and you can't see what's going on, but it's not going to blind everybody either. 0.25 I have found is a pretty reasonable lightness level. You can also animate this in the animator, but I don't usually bother with that because I'm pretty happy with my 0.25 and if somebody who buys my avatars may want to change that then they are more than welcome to. So I'm going to leave that at 0.25 and that's all I'm going to do in my light data for now. Next I'm going to go down to shading and I like to shade mine realistic. Now this is completely personal preference. You can shade yours as flat. There's a lot of other shading types that you can use as well, but because I rely pretty heavily on normal maps, I like to have realistic shading because I just think overall it looks better and that is completely my personal opinion. Like I said, you're welcome to use whatever type of shading that you want in this area. I'm not going to add a color to my shadow tint either. If I want to add it on a specific material, I will when the time comes, but I usually just leave this alone, change it to realistic, and we're good to go. The next thing I always do is all the way down at the bottom in rendering, I turn the culling off because I want the front side and the back side of all my vertices to be shown at all times. This does create a little bit less optimization to have every single thing have your culling off, but I haven't noticed any difference whatsoever in doing it and I think it makes everything look a lot better because there may be things that you don't catch or maybe normals that are flipped or something like that that might make it necessary to turn your calling off. So I usually have that off. And then if I wanted to do outlines on my model, this is where I would turn the outlines on for everything. You can turn your outline size way down. As you can see, it puts outlines on literally everything you have on your model. You can change the color to whatever you want. Usually black is a pretty good option. And I think for this model, I will leave the outlines on just so that we can go over it a little bit more in depth. So I'm just going to turn it down actually a little bit more to 0.1 so that they're really thin, maybe 1.5. Let's split the difference. 1.5 looks good, so I'm going to leave those outlines on. And as for everything else, I think all of those are going to be individually edited. So I'm going to go ahead and click off of all of these, but they're all ready to go individually in and edit each one. So I'm just going to start at the beginning for my fishnets. I think these ones are pretty much ready to go. I don't really have anything extra to add to them. They have cut out applied so you can see them perfectly fine. And then they have the back face calling off, which we already set up so that you can see where everything is. And those look great. So I'm just going to leave those alone and not do anything to them. All right, next we're going to work on the bikini. And in order to see the bikini, I'm going to turn off whatever is on top of it. So that would be the tank top and then also the boxers. 
and then also the zipper shorts. And it looks like for some reason my bikini is clipping a little bit so I'm just going to really quickly do what I did in the other video and I'm going to just go back into Blender, fix this up really quick, and then re-import my FBX. So now that that's fixed, I'm going to go ahead and look at my color and normals. And I know that I don't have an actual normal map for this bikini so it applied a different normal map which doesn't usually happen but in case it does just scroll all the way up and choose none and that will take your normal map right off the bikini because that was not the correct one. If you did want to add a normal map that you can tile, there's lots of normal maps that you can find online and royalty free sites and stuff like that. So feel free to add like a cloth texture or something like that. But for now, I'm happy with just how this looks. That's fine with me. But let's say I want to add a little bit of shine to this. So I think that I'm going to add a matte cap. So I'm going to go into my shading area and I'm going to click on matte cap and that will immediately turn everything white. And that's because this matte cap is set to replace the color, the original color. Now before we mess with any of this, I'm actually going to choose a matte cap to use. So I'm going to take my textures and I'm going to make them go up a little bit so I can see them better. And let's say I want maybe this metallic sheen on it, but I don't want it to be only metallic. So I'm actually going to take the place and slide it all the way down and I'm going to slide the multiply all the way up so it'll take the base color and just add that right on top of it so it gives it a little bit more of a metallic sheen which is really cool and you can make the intensity higher or lower that'll make your matte cap brighter or darker it'll just basically intensify whatever your matte cap is you can also have this have an emission so it can get brighter or darker but I honestly hardly ever put emissions on my matte caps because they are a little bit overwhelming but you know what sometimes people really like to do that and sometimes I really like when other people do it too so it just depends on your preference. You can also mix your base color in so that it mixes with the matte cap itself. Let's say I mixed my base color in a whole lot and then I wanted to actually replace it. It's kind of a different effect so you could mix your base color in a whole lot. It's almost the same as doing a multiply but I'm just going to have my base color all the way down, my replace all the way down, and my multiply all the way up. You can also add your matte cap on which is another form of mixing it but I hardly ever use the add. I usually only use replace or multiply but a lot of people do use add and you can try and mess around with all these settings to get the effect that you want with your matte caps. There's also a section right here for masking so if you only wanted a part of this to have a matte cap and you had a mask for it you can put it right here and I'll show you that because I am going to be using that for other materials. Now there's also an option for cube maps and this is in addition to matte caps but they work a lot like matte caps. The blending mode right here you can do replace or multiply or add just like a matte cap and you can choose your cube map and this is where all of the cube maps that I offer on my website for free that you can download that I made myself. This is where you can use any of these that you'd like. So once you apply your cube map you can see it applies basically a reflective surface of whatever that cube map is and these can be really really cool. So I have this set to replace but you can also put it as multiply and it will add it to your item and then it will also layer on top of your mat cap. So you can play around with what you'd like for all of these to see what works the best and it's really cool. It gives a really cool effect almost like a parallaxing effect when you use a cube map. So for this bikini I am not going to use the cube map. I just wanted to show you how that works. And then also for this bikini I'm going to add a special effect. I would like to add glitter to this bikini. So I'm going to turn on the glitter and sparkle effect and I'll just give you the basic glitter. So what I'm going to do is my glitter density, I want a lot of glitter so I'm going to turn this way up. I'm going to turn this to like 9000 and as you can see there's a lot more glitter in there. You can also change the glitter size to be larger or smaller. You can mess with the values of minimum and maximum brightness although I don't usually change that. I like my glitter to go really hard so I usually change it up to like 20, 30, 40, whatever I'm feeling like in the moment and it'll speed up really fast. So that's really great. You can also change the bias and contrast, but I'm going to leave those alone for now. And up here you can also do mixing of the base color. So I want my glitter to be the same color as my outfit. So I'm just going to turn that up just a little bit. I don't want it all the way up because I'm going to add a little bit of color, maybe just a little tiny pinch of like an orangish color, maybe a little bit more ready, just to kind of give it a little bit more dimension and then have that just be like a little hint. So I'm going to mix the base color almost all the way. 
You can also add a mask in the masking section. So if you only want a part of this to be glittery, you can add your mask right here. I'm going to have the whole thing be glittery. And then the last thing I'm going to do for this glitter is I would like the angle range to be much, much, much less. So this is basically going to make it be like it's really shiny. And as you see, when you move around, the glitter will only shine like where the highlights are. So that's a really, really cool effect. So instead of being like totally shiny, it's going to make it look almost like a metallic material with the texture on it which is really cool so I'm gonna leave that as it is like that and you can see it kind of just makes a really different effect than just having your glitter sparkle and that's all I'm gonna do for the bikini so I'm gonna close all of these up and we'll move on to the next one so now we have our boxers so let me just toggle those on because I had toggled them off before and I'm gonna go into my color and normals my boxers do not have a normal map but I kind of want like a cloth normal map on there so I actually have one that I found from my royalty free website and I'm going to import that into my textures folder right here so I have imported a couple of different textures, not just some cloth, but also some animal skins that I found. And like I said, if you have access to any like stock or royalty free websites, usually you can search for normal maps and find some really cool ones. And you can best to find ones that are tileable so you can make them larger or smaller however you'd like. So I'm going to go back into my materials folder. I'm going to go back to my boxers and in this normal map, I'm going to type in cloth and there's a couple of cloth normals. So I'm going to see and obviously this looks pretty terrible. I'm going to click fix now so that it's set as a normal map. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tile this. So let's see if 12 looks pretty good. And as you can see, 12 is looking a lot better. And it just gives it a little bit extra. So let's try a little bit less. Let's try 9. And that is actually looking pretty good for this texture. It just gives it a little something extra. It's definitely not something that you need to do. But I just really like to do it. So now that my normal map is set up, sometimes what I like to do when something is looking a little bit dull or drab is I will put a matte cap on and in the matte caps that I had you download from my website there is one called satin and this one I use for almost everything <laughs> because it leaves everything the same color but just gives it a little bit more depth and I'm just going to turn down replace all the way and turn multiply all the way up and it just makes the normal map pop out just a little bit more and makes it look really nice so that's looking really good for the shorts so now I'm going to move on to my next one, which is the choker. All right, so for this choker, this is the one where in our Blender series, we redid the UV map on this. But as you can see, this heart doesn't have an outline on it, which means that this heart has flipped normals from Blender. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back into Blender and fix this up really quick. It's a really easy fix. So here in Blender, I'm going to turn off the body so that I can see the choker a little bit better. And I'm going to go up here here to this little blue two circles and I'm going to drop that down and I'm going to click on face orientation and as you can see a lot of these faces are not facing the correct way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the choker and click tab for edit mode I'm going to hit a to select everything on this choker and I'm going to go to mesh normals and if I were just selecting the ones that were inside out which would be the red color I would click but because I clicked everything I'm just going to click recalculate outside and it will just try and figure out what's on the outside and usually it will do it really really well so now you can see everything is facing the right direction but I can also see that right here I have a little bit of red on the bikini as well and I didn't even notice that that was a thing the fact the reason that you can see red on the inside of this is because this is the inside. This is the part that's facing the body and that's what you want. So you want all the outside faces to be blue and all of the inside faces to be red. So I'm also going to go onto the bikini right here as long as I'm here and I'm going to click L to select all of these faces and I clicked a few that I didn't want so I'm going to click shift L to select only the faces that I want so that will unselect those linked pieces. Now that I have this selected I'm going to go to mesh normals and flip and then that will be facing the correct direction as well and it will also take on the outlines so now i can turn off my face orientation turn my body back on exit edit mode and now i can save and re-export and re-import back into unity once that's finished loading into unity you can see boom there you go all of the outlines are back and the normals are no longer flipped now we can get on to editing the materials on this choker. Now this choker is pretty small, so I think I want to take the outlines down a little bit and let's do it at point one, just so they're not as in your face. 
Now my base color for this that I had made in the blender series was blue and pink but I decided that I wanted my avatar to have more of a black and white vibe so not as much pastels. So what I did was change the base color all to white and we are going to edit everything with matte caps. So I want to put a normal map just on this choker part and I happen to have a mask for it. To have the animal skin normal map just go around this part of the choker right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add details. So I'm going to check the box for details on and I'm going to add the mask. So I'm going to type in choker and this is the mask that's just for the choker part that goes around the neck. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And a lot of times when you add a mask, it will have your mask set as the wrong type. That's fine. Just click fix now and that will totally fix it. No worries. I'm going to leave my detail texture off right now because I don't need a texture on. I'm going to be texturing it using matte caps, but I do want to add a normal map. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add the animal skin normal map that I downloaded from a free website. I made sure that it's royalty free, so it's completely free to use. There's no licensing required for it. And then I'm going to tile it. Let's try seven tiled and you can kind of see where it's going. I mean, I think, I think maybe I wanted a little bit higher. Let's do nine. And that is looking perfect to me. So now it's only on this part. And the thing about details is if you're adding a secondary normal, you can only really do one because there's only one section for details. Maybe that will be expanded at a later time. But for now, that's really all I need. I'm going to leave the texture blank and I'm done with my details. If I had added the normal map up here, it would add the normal map to the entire thing. This way, by adding it through the details, I can add it just to a part that I want masked off. Next, I'm going to go down to shading and I'm going to be utilizing masks to do my matte caps. Now for the first matte cap, I'm going to turn this on and we're going to do the matte cap for the actual choker that we just put the normal map on. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the mask right here and I'm going to go to my choker mask, add that and I don't have to fix anything because I've already used this. So it's already set up correctly. And once that's masked out, now whatever matte cap I put on this is only going to apply to this part of the choker. So I'm going to add a latex matte cap to it because I think that that is going to look really good. And it does, except it seems like it's really extreme as far as where the highlights are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the intensity down just a little bit and I'm using a full replace. So it's replacing entirely the color of this. And now you can see that looks a lot more realistic just from using masks. Next, I want to try doing all of the metal. So let's add another matte cap and I'm actually going to lock this so that I can find the texture I want in my textures folder. So this will stay here no matter what I click over here. So next I want to do the heart and the wings because the metal part of this is actually a different material and that will apply to all the metals on the avatar. So I'm going to save that for later because that's coming up later in the materials. So for this heart, I'm going to find my heart mask. Here it is. I'm going to fix that. And then I'm going to find a matte cap that will go really well with the heart. And you can try out different ones to see how they look. As you see, the first matte cap is automatically set to replace, but all the subsequent matte caps don't have anything on. So you can just go ahead and slide that all the way up to replace to see how the heart looks. And then you can try out different matte caps to see how you like it, how they look, which one you like best. And I really like this hammered silver one, so I'm going to leave that one for the heart. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the wings, add a third matte cap. I'm going to add a mask, the wings, fix that one. And then I'm going to set this all the way up to replace. And we're going to find a matte cap for the wings. And even though I like a lot of these matte caps that I have available, I think what I want to do for the wings is try a cube map. So this is how you would add a third matte cap to the wings, but I'm actually just going to reset this close this up and I'm going to put a cube map on the wings instead. So I'm going to click on the mask and then I'm going to put my wings mask on and then I'm going to choose a cube map for the wings, which just can be really, really cool. So feel free to use any of the custom cube maps that came in. I think that a lot of these are really cool. Also, the all sky comes with cube maps as well. So you can try out what those look like. Honestly, you can have all the creative liberty that you could possibly want with cube maps and matte caps. You could do your whole avatar in it almost. So highly recommend using the cube map option because it's just so fun. So I think I'm going to go with this silvery one and there we go. My choker is now done other than the metal 
well, which I will be getting to. Now for my eyes, I'm going to turn my body back on. So for these eyes, I'm using Zimpia's Soft Eyes, and I have my color already applied. There's no normal map for the eyes, but I would like to add some glitter and some emission. So I'm going to go back to my glitter and sparkle. I'm going to turn this up probably to about 3000. I'm going to have the glitter size be a little bit bigger and I am going to add a mask because Zimpia's soft eye set comes with masks for glitter and emission. So I'm going to go down here to masking. I'm going to choose my mask. And as you can see, there's a few glitter masks that have to do with the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. I'm going to have it be a little bit up. Let's do 30. And as you can see, it will only go like in the bottom half of the eyes now. And that is a really cool effect. You can also try out different masks if you want. So if I look at different ones, let's say I only want it just in the bottom rim. And there you go. Now it's just in the bottom rim. And I think I like that one a lot. So we're going to stick with that one for the glitter. And I'm going to leave my glitter white for this. So I'm not going to mix my base color at all. And then I also want to add an emission. So in order to add an emission, I'm also going to add another mask that comes with Zimpia's eyes. And I think I'm actually going to use the same as the glitter mask and have that be there. And if you want a map, that will be what color your emission is. But I'm just going to leave that empty because I want my emission to just be white. And then I'm going to have my emission strength be pretty low. Let's do like 0.2, maybe 0.3. And if you want to see what it looks like without the lights on, you can always disable the lights or turn the lights on and off using this little light bulb. You can also disable the directional light. And if your directional light is like not in the right space, feel free to move your directional light wherever you want. So if I'm clicking on my directional light right here, you can see it's kind of facing from the top down. So I can move it, rotate it, scale it. You can move with W, E is rotate. So I want to rotate it this way and then this way and then this way so that it's pointing right at her and you can kind of get different angles. And I'm going to go back to my move and bring it up a little bit. And now it's pointing pretty much directly at her but off to the side. So feel free to move that around wherever you'd like and that way when you turn on and off your light source it will show really clearly what it looks like with light and dark or you can have just like a generic if you want to turn off all of your lights altogether. But if you turn off your directional light it'll show you a good preview of what she looks like in dimmer lighting. I'm coming to the point where I have to scroll a whole lot to get closer to her and it's not working like how do I get closer to her. Just click on something in your armature in your hierarchy like your box. Body, hover over this window and click F and it will recenter that object in your view and you can scroll in as normal. So I'm going to make sure that my directional light is off so that I can see the emission in her eyes and that actually looks like a pretty good level. I don't want it to be overwhelmingly bright but I'm also going to add a little bit of an extra element to her emission. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do for a mission. You can have scrolling, which will go from one direction to another. Blinking, which is what we're going to use. Center out, which will take your emission map and kind of scroll it from the center to the outwards and then back again. But for this, we're going to use blinking. And as you can see, it's blinking pretty fast. So I just want to have it down a little bit. Let's put it on like two for the velocity. And then for the blink minimum, and the blink maximum, this is how bright you want. So one is going to be whatever this is and zero is going to be off. So it goes from off all the way up to your maximum emission strength, which I have at 0.3. So zero will be zero and maximum will be 0.3, which one just means like 100% of what you chose. So I think that that looks pretty good. I'm happy with how her eyes are looking and that is all I'm going to do for her eyes. I'm going to go ahead and turn the lighting off so that it's just the generic middle ground, no directional light or anything like that. And we will move on to the face. Now, a lot of times I like to edit the face and the skin together to start because it makes it really easy to get your rim lighting and things like that matched up because I love to do rim lighting on the face and the body. And then I'll go in individually and do them separately as well. But to start out, uh, our color is already going to be set so we can leave that alone. Our shading is already set up as well. So we're going to go into shading and we're going to go into rim lighting. Now I kind of use my rim lighting as like subsurface scattering. So I like to have like a little bit of like a pinkish red color and I do it pretty dark so that it almost matches like the skin color. And then once you have the color set, 
I like to mix the base color in about halfway as well just so that it for sure makes it blend really nicely. And then I like to bring my sharpness down quite a bit, not all the way, but I don't like it to be really sharp. I like it to be blurred out a little bit along the edges. And then I'm going to bring my width down a lot as well. So it's just like that edge where it looks like the backlighting is just coming through those top layers of skin, which looks amazing. It really, really brings to life every skin tone that I do, and I absolutely love it. I'm going to actually mix my base color in with it a little bit more because when I do multiple skin colors, I'm going to have the rim color stay the same. And so if I did a darker skin tone on her, I want her rim color to still look good with that particular skin tone. I'm also going to add a matte cap. I'm going to put it as multiply instead of replace and I'm going to put my satin matte cap on there. And this just gives a little bit more depth and I really like the way that this satin matte cap makes the skin look. I also found a skin normal matte so I'm going to go ahead and add that right now. If you have a body texture normal map for ZenFit or for your head or anything that you're using, go ahead and put that in now. But because I am not going to use any of that, I'm going to be using a generic skin normal. And so I just have a tileable skin normal. And as you can see, that looks terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And then I'm going to go into the face first and I'm going to tile this enough that it's not super noticeable. So I'm just going to toggle this down and let's try 15 see if that looks good. That looks pretty good, but I also want it to be just a little bit less noticeable. So let's do 17 and you can bring the skin normal intensity down to like 0.6 ish. And there you go. Now that has a really nice skin normal and it looks very realistic. Now we're going to do it on the body and I'm going to try, let's try 15 again. It's usually not the same as the head. It usually needs to be a little bit more because there's a bigger texture. So let's try 22. And that is looking pretty good as well. I'm going to turn this down to 0.6 as well. And that is looking really good for a skin texture. And this is just a skin normal map that I found again on a royalty free website. So those are looking really good, but let's go back into the face now. So for the face outlines, I don't want it to be as intense as the rest of the model. And so I'm going to bring her face outlines way down. We're going to do like five or 0 0.05, I guess, and then kind of bring it up just a little bit until it looks just about right. Cause I don't want her face outlines to be as big as the rest because they're just a little bit too intense. So that's looking a lot better in my opinion. So I also want to add glitter to her face. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my glitter and sparkle. And I happen to have a mask that goes on this face so that there's not glitter on the whole entire face. I only want to limit it to a few sections. So I'm going to go into masking. And here I have the face shine mask, which is also used for emission, but I'm going to use it for glitter. And then as you can see, it only puts glitter in certain areas like on her cheeks and different things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this to be a lot more dense. And then I'm also going to turn up use base color so that it turns into the color of the skin. So it's a lot more subtle, but it looks really, really nice in the game. And that's it for my face. And I even got a little bit of my body started too because of the rim lighting and everything. So now for my hair, which remember the hair is for the hair and also the ears and tail. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of emission and add some glitter. So for the glitter, you know, the drill, just the same thing as always. Let me go ahead and add that really quickly. I'm also going to turn up the base color all the way and I'm going to have all over glitter with no angle range or anything like that. Then for my emission, I want to have it be white. I'm going to add an emission mask that I have that comes with my hair so that only the tips get emission because I really like the way that that looks. And I'm going to turn my emission up to like 0.3. And that seems a little too bright, so I'm gonna do it on 0.2 and that looks a lot better. And once again, I can show it with the directional light on or off. If it turns blue like this, that's fine. That just means that it's loading with a different light type. So now you can see what it looks like. And what I like to do a lot of the times for hair emissions is a scrolling emission. And as you can see, it's very, very fast. So we're just going to turn this down. Let's try three, two, and one. 
So this is the width of the scroll. This is how fast it goes. And this is how many times it goes in a row. So I usually do pretty low numbers. I don't like it to be too intense. You can also change the direction of the flow. I have mine going top to bottom, which is negative in the Y axis, but you could also have it go side to side. Just mess around with these settings and see what you like the best. So I'm going to leave my hair emission that way. That looks really good to me. And I'm going to turn my light back on. You can't really see a lot of the emission in the light, but that's totally fine. Next, we're going to do her eyelashes and eyebrows so that she doesn't look like she has super chunky spider lashes. And basically, all we're going to do is we're going to change this from cut out to transparent. And then in the color and normals, we have our texture added, but we need to add our alpha map, which is our lashes, and they are called transparent. So here is our transparency. We're going to add that as our alpha map. And there you go. Now you have some brows and some eyelashes and they look much, much better. That is all we're going to do for the lashes. Now we're going to move on to the leg warmers. And for this, basically, we just have to choose our normal map and here we have our leg warmers normal map we're going to fix that so that it looks better and if you want to change the color of them you definitely can because our texture is white so you can add whatever color you'd like i'm good with having a white leg warmers maybe actually we'll do like a darker gray i think that looks pretty good and I'm not going to add anything else to these leg warmers. I'm just going to leave them as is. You can also add rim lighting or matte caps or whatever you'd like to these. But I'm fine with just how these look as is. So next in the list is metals. But I really like to do metals. And I'm a kind of dessert after dinner kind of person. And so metals is like my dessert. So I'm going to do metals last. I'm going to skip over that one. And we're going to go to her nails. Now the nails look pretty darn good already. But I think that I'm going to turn the outlines for the nails away way down let's do 0 0.05 so that they're not as intense and don't worry the other outlines that are on here are for the metals and we're going to turn those way down as well and i want to add a matte cap to these so i'm going to go ahead and pick a shiny matte cap and i'm going to add that as a multiply instead of a replace because i still want to see the pretty design but it'll make them look really shiny and metallic so i'm going to leave that matte cap on there in fact let's use my favorite metals matte cap right here, which is a really simple one that I've had for probably since the day that I started making avatars. And I really like it because you can just turn anything metallic. So I'm going to add that to those nails and we're moving on. Next, we have our first pair of shoes. I'm going to go ahead and turn my second pair of shoes off and my leg warmers. I'm going to click on those shoes and I'm going to click F to center them. And we're going to look at what we've got in here. And these shoes don't happen to have a normal map, which is totally fine. And we don't have to worry about the metals because all of these metal parts are added to our metal materials. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave these as is, but I'm also going to add a simple matte cap. I'm going to turn it all the way to multiply and add satin just to give it a little bit of more depth. So that's good for the first pair of shoes. Now we're going to move on to the second pair of shoes. And these ones do have a normal map. So I'm going to go ahead and add that, fix the normal map. That looks great. And then I'm also going to add a matte cap to these shoes as well. And as you can see, it just makes it look even better with that normal map. But I'm going to go ahead and add it as a multiply instead of replace so that you can still see the shoe texture. underneath. Just like the metals, I'm going to skip over the skin for now because we're going to add a whole bunch of tattoos and things like that later. And for the skin, we pretty much have that done. In a later video, I will be going over tattoos and decals and different things like that. So stay tuned for that. But for now, we're going to leave the skin as is and move on to the sweatpants. So I'm going to make sure that those are toggled on and we have our normal map attached. So our normal map is not correct and I'm actually going to add a cloth normal. Let's try this cloth normal and we want to tile it. That looks pretty cool. Just gives it a little bit more of a wrinkle effect. And then I think I'm going to add a detail normal as well. I don't need to add a mask because I'm going to be putting the normal on the entire thing. And I'm going to put a cloth texture on here. So let's see how this one looks. And of course there's experimentation. What looks good, what doesn't. And that adds a little something extra. Let's see what the other cloth texture looks like. I think I like this one a little bit more. That looks pretty cool. I do need to fix that. And I'm going to bring that intensity down just a little bit. I want it just to be a hint. Now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and add a matte cap, a satin matte cap as a multiply. And there you go. That looks really great. Lots of wrinkles. They look like really worn in, comfy sweatpants. And I love that. 
Now we only have two things left. We have the tank top and the zipper shorts. So I'm just going to really quickly go through and do the same things that I've done with all the rest. So on the tank top in Blender, we created an alpha for this. So if we wanted to put the alpha on here, we can put the alpha in there and have that little cutout and that would be super cute. Or we can use that mask for a metallic heart on there. And I'm just going to leave the tank top as is just being a plain white tank top. I think it looks great just like that. And there we go. The tank top is ready to go. And we only have one more material before we get to the metals. And that's the zipper shorts. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those on and the sweats off. And I'm going to have these zipper shorts be pretty like latexy. Make sure that the normal map is the correct one. It is. It's set to one. And I'm going to go straight to shading and go straight to matte cap. And I'm going to find my latex right here that looks awesome but I also want it to multiply and as you can see it's also replacing the zipper so let's see if we have anything to be done about that it looks like the zipper shorts texture themselves can act as a mask because it's black and white so let's see if we can put the matte cap mask in here as the main texture because we won't be needing our base texture if we're using this latex texture. So let's just go ahead and drag this right here into this square and I'm going to take it out of our main texture area and just click none for that. And it looks like it's reversed so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a copy of this with control C and control V and then I'm going to bring this into Photoshop and I'm going to use my levels to make it a little bit more intense, really, really white, white. And then control I to swap the colors because I only want my matte cap where it's white and not on the zipper. So I'm going to save this and go back to Unity. And now I can replace that matte cap right there, the mask with the white one. So let's just go ahead and replace that. And there we go. Now the zipper is completely textureless. So what we're going to do is choose matte cap one, put this one all the way to replace, and we're going to use the black mask so that it only has the zipper. And then when we choose the matte cap for the zipper, it will be the zipper texture. So let's choose a nice metal texture for that. Or you know what? We could even do a cube map. So let's do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset this matte cap. I'm going to use a cube map for the zipper. I'm going to use this to mask it. I'm going to choose replace. And then we can choose a really cool cube map for the zipper. So let's do this one. I think that looks actually pretty darn cool. So now our zipper is done and our shorts are done and they look really good. So the last thing that we need to do is just our metals. So we can zoom in kind of to the face. And for our metal outlines, we want these to be really low. So let's do 0 0.05 because I really don't want a whole lot of outlines on my metals anyway. And let's add a cube map for our metals. We don't need a mask because the entire thing is going to be a cube map. And we can just kind of test out, see what different ones look like. And there's a lot of really cool ones, but I think I'm going to go with a relatively simple one this time. Let's go with this one right here. So that is looking really good. And then I also want to add rim lighting to my metals. And on this one, I want it to be very sharp and I want it to be just along the edge of it. And as you can see, that just adds a little bit of depth and brightness to it. And then I also want to add a lot of glitter. So let's get our glitter out of our special effects. Turn that way up again. Turn the glitter size really high because everything of my metals is really small. So we want to make sure that we can see a lot of them. I'm going to turn the contrast down so you can see it even more. And then I'm going to mix the base color in quite a bit as well so that it kind of matches. And there we go. Now all of our metals everywhere on our choker and on our sneakers and different things like that. And even on the nails are all going to be the same metal color, which is super nice to have. You just do it once and then all of your metals are taken care of. So that is the basics of how I set up up my base materials for all of my models. I like to keep it relatively simple. I don't do anything crazy or over the top, but I like it to look really nice and realistic in game. And as you can see, she looks pretty darn good so far. 
I will be covering a lot of um, body textures and decals in the upcoming video, so stay tuned for that because I will be showing you how to add tattoos and how I specifically make them look really cool, how to add normal maps to them and all the different things like that. So stay tuned for that because we are not completely done with materials, but I hope that this was super helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one.